In this video we're going to create a new Microsoft Azure Active Directory so that we can use it with Dynamics AX Enterprise Portal. So let's have a look at the basic uh, architecture here. So what I'll have is a SharePoint site which is my Enterprise Portal and then SharePoint has been configured to use Microsoft Azure Active Directory control services and so with that the ACS I can trust a Azure Active Directory and in the Active Directory I can use and configure the users up here or, or trust another directory which might be a customer or vendor company for example. So let's have a look at creating a new directory configuring it in ACS and uh, seeing how that will be used in the AX Enterprise Portal. So if we go to the Azure Active Directory, I'm going to go and create a new directory. So I'll say new directory, create a custom directory. And in this case, I'm going to call it DAX EP. So my domain will be DAX EP. And if I get a green check mark, then that'll mean that I can use it. Um, so the domain will be DAX EP at on Microsoft.com and we can specify the um, country so we'll say OK. So this will go and create so I'll just pause the video uh, for 30 seconds OK. Nope didn't get to it so it's already created. OK so there's our directory created and if we have a look in the users I've just got me as the default user already created. Now I could go and add new users here so I could say Sarah for example we'll see the domain DAX EP at on Microsoft.com and so I could configure a new user Sarah There will be a new user for example, so we'll create Sarah and this will be the temporary password so I'm going to just keep that for the moment so I'm just going to put it in Notepad and we'll use that later when we sign on as Sarah. So we'll say OK. Now at this stage um, for us to connect to the AX Enterprise Portal we need to create an application but before we create the application we need to uh, work out what the application is going to connect to and this is actually going to connect to my Azure Access Control namespaces so I've configured one already so if we go and manage that um, here is my uh, Access Control namespace um, so this uh, URL here represents what my application will be to Azure Active Directory. So let's go and take that. So I've just copied that. So I'm going to go back into my directory. I'm going to go back into my DAX EP directory, which is my new one, and we're going to go to Applications. So I'm going to add an application, which will be an, an application my organization is developing. And I'm going to just call it um, AXEP in this example. So it'll be a web application. So the sign on URL in terms of um, where that access is going to happen is that access control that we cr created. So I'm simply going to paste these into the app properties and then we're going to say OK. So that basically means that our applications configured and this is basically saying that our Azure Access Control um, can use this application to access the directory. Now we need to do something on the other side as well which is on Access Control. Firstly I'm going to go and have a look at our users so we can see our Sarah user that we created she doesn't have access to use this application so the individual users need to be granted access and you can do that by groups so I'm just going to simply say assign um, Sarah to be able to access this application so then any applications that pass through this um, Sarah will be able to log on. Now if we go and configure we'll, we'll see here's uh, the manage the uh, uh, manifest or manage the endpoints for example and these are the endpoints so uh, I'm going to need one of these when I match up access control to trust 
um, the new Active Directory that we created. So I'm going to copy that from the Federation Metadata document. So you'll see uh, my domain is DAXEP, my application is AXEP, and I'm just taking the endpoint from the application. So this is the Federation Metadata document. So let's go across to Azure Access Control. So in here I could then go and create a new identity provider and the identity provider is going to be my Azure Active Directory. So I'm going to go and say add and it's going to be a WS Federation identity provider and so we can say next and I'm going to call it the same as what our directory is. So in this particular case I called it DAX EP which will map to the DAX EP directory that we created. It's just purely a naming convention just to keep them the same. Now the configuration that we need is the WS Federation metadata and that's the URL that we got from the endpoint configuration. So I'm going to paste that in here. Um, so it purely comes from the endpoints of our application, the Federation metadata document. So that's configured in here. So now ACS knows how to go and inquire about our directory over there on Azure Active Directory. So I'm going to put um, some text here. This will be um, when the link pops up you'll see text here specifically that the user can choose the directory to authenticate against. Now the relaying parties are important um, because these are already configured on my SharePoint uh, environment. These are the, the enterprise portal URLs that now will trust this identity provider. So I'm going to associate those together. So now we have a few identity providers. Um, I've got three that just happen to be Active Directory, Azure Active Directory, and then I have Windows Live as well. Now at this stage um, we've connected ACS to um, Azure Active Directory, but we need to configure the relaying parties. And this is done through what's called the rule groups. So in the rule group I'm going to go and um, set these up to say we can accept the claim when it comes back from Azure Active Directory. So in this particular case I'm going to hit the generate button and I'm going to choose the DAX EP because this is not configured with my uh, specific relaying party. So I'm going to hit DAX EP which is the one the identity provider that we just configured so I'm going to say generate. This will create a whole bunch of claims um, and in Dynamics AX we don't actually use all these claims so I'm going to carefully remove these claims and we'll do it screen by screen so I'm just going to say delete. Now the ones we want to keep are the name identifier so we'll see we have name identifier for DAX EP so I'm going to remove name I'm going to leave all the name identifiers for my different identity providers and we'll remove those to clean it up. As well we have uh, two more down the bottom so we'll just clean those up. So at this stage there's my DAX EP and I've only got the one claim now which is name identifier so we can save that. So I'm going to do the same procedure for my other rule groups um, and I've got three rule groups because they relate to the three relaying applications application parties um, that are configured in the SharePoint uh, setup that we have in AX. So I'm going to pause the video. I'm just going to do that exact same procedure for these two uh, which is generate and then generate my DAX EP and then go and clean up the claims. So I'll hit pause and run through on the cleanup of this. Okay, I've done that. So if we have a look at each of our rule groups, I've just got the name identifier for each of those uh, configured. So that's really what we've been left with, name identifier and then the claim issuer, which is the trusted identity provider, which is actually Active Directory. And so you'll see the third one, name identifier. So that's basically now the connection made. So SharePoint in AX has already been configured to trust Access Control. Now Access Control trusts the Active Directory and now we'll actually be able to uh, sign in to the Enterprise Portal. So let's jump across to the Enterprise Portal. 
I've got it running here so I'm going to close it down and so I'm going to go into my public site that we've got configured and then when we go to the vendor portal for example I'm going to go and sign up and so we'll say OK. So now we're prompted with our different identity providers. So this is our new one, which is DAX EP, which I'm going to select on. So I'm going to say Sarah at DAX EP on Microsoft com. Now the password was the temporary password that we captured earlier when we initially created Sarah. So I'm going to grab that one. and I'm going to paste that in and we'll sign on. Now Active Directory will prompt me to change the password so I'm just going to change the password and we'll say OK and now we'll try to log back in and we'll sign in Okay, at this point the authentication is working. We've, we've authenticated with Sarah as the new vendor. Um, now there's multiple ways that, vet, uh, that Sarah could be added as a user. So let's, let's walk through a, another example that could be registered. But I'm going to do this as a vendor. Um, so I'm going to jump into AX and I'm going to go into the accounts payable and I'm going to go and create a new vendor and we'll say that this is DAX EP is my vendor or we'll just say that this is new supplier corp okay and we'll set up that vendor now we'll put a contact for the vendor so we'll say add contact and we'll say Sarah Thomas, I'm going to put DAX EP here because Sarah already exists in our data so just to avoid confusion I'm going to pick the phone, uh, the email address um, I need the, and then this is a dummy email address but I need this to um, for the workflow to configure and so <clears throat> at this point I've got a contact for our new supplier corp I'm going to add a vendor user um, this you'll see the authentication method here is Azure ACS um, and so this is the inbuilt authentication built into AX2012 um, that we've allowed to use Azure uh, ACS and this was done in uh, the R3 release so I'm going to make um, Sarah the vendor portal administrator and we're going to hit save. At this point the workflow is going to be submitted um, so that it can start a process of actually uh, adding Sarah as a user to Dynamics AX. So if we work through the functional sort of workflow what we'll see if I go into for example procurement and sourcing I'll have vendor user requests I'll also see this underneath the user requests area in system administration. So this is our Sarah user and you'll see that it says authentication pending. And that's because uh, a workflow is running and is now sending Sarah uh, an email and if we have a look at the message here we'll get a specific unique URL for Sarah to go and log on to the portal. So I'm going to copy that URL and I'm going to go and log on so we'll go into here we're going to say now our Azure Active Directory which is DAX EP and so we're going to log on as Sarah at DAX EP on Microsoft.com and so we'll put in our changed password and we'll sign on at this stage the authentication process is complete and um, Sarah doesn't have to do anything more at this stage. 
what will happen is the next part of the workflow will actually run and you'll see that um, it's now completed. At this stage Sarah is now configured as a user in uh, Dynamics AX. So if we have a look at the users what we'll see in the user list is um, a claims user. So this is Sarah that we created and you'll see that it's connected um, through Azure ACS which is the network domain. This network domain needs to match what's been configured in SharePoint. Uh, so SharePoint knows the domain or, or the trusted identity provider which is Azure ACS. It, now that's actually configured in your SharePoint Central Administrator. So on the web application if you have a look at your authentication providers you'll see um, that Azure ACS is the name given to the trusted identity provider. So those will match um, and so effectively AX is, is leaving it to SharePoint and then leaving it to that identity provider configuration to authenticate the users. So at this point, Sarah is now a user. She has certain permissions. We could certainly go and change those permissions in the system. So for example, I could say and add the vendor external role to give her extra permissions on the system. If we now go across and we try to log on to Enterprise Portal, This site's using HTTPS, so I'm just going to accept the certificate error. At this point it's going to ask to sign in, so I'm going to pick the Azure ACS and this will be prompted for my different identity providers. So I'm going to say DAX EP, at which point I can sign on as Sarah at DAX EP on microsoft.com we have a typo on microsoft.com so I can put in the password so now the authentication is happening to the Azure Access Control and it's asking Azure Active Directory if that's okay for them oh, we're and we're essentially trusting access control to go and verify the identity. When that validates OK, then that's returned to the uh, SharePoint and Enterprise Portal and therefore the new user is um, able to access the functionality. So if we have a look at contacts, we'll see for example that we have Sarah, that's the username we created or the contact name we created and you'll see under the profile um, the details about this account which is the new supplier corp uh, vendor account that we created. So effectively we've walked through an end-to-end -end process. Um, if we have a look at it from a diagram perspective we first created the Azure Active Directory and a new user in there. We configured the Azure Access Control to trust that Active Directory and then we walk through a process on the enterprise portal to um, allow a user to log on, um, which is basically a process of configuring AX and making sure that in the AX database um, that the user can actually log on. So mapping the security roles permission to the user, which we did in the core AX. So once that's done, then the user can log on to the enterprise portal and the authentication will go and reach out and tr check with Active Directory if they're a valid user. So that's a quick walkthrough of some of the concepts of using Azure Active Directory through ACS on the AX Enterprise Portal.